So today we continue with our lesson 8 of our timely Spring Boot app application and today we are going to be seeing how to initialize our database that is to put some initial data into the database. But the question is, where is the table we are going to use? We've not created any table. And that is an interesting thing. Uh, Spring Boot, uh, Hibernate actually creates a table automatically for us using the name of the model. So if you look at the model we created, this student class so we annotated it with an entity annotation as you can see and that means that it is recognized as an entity which can actually represent a table so when this application runs a table is created with the name student again if you look at the application properties file i think uh, i made it a bit easier now i've commented out the configuration for the h2 and now the configuration for the mysql is active and so again, I say if you have some problem with time time zone, just append at the end of the of the database string uh, this server time zone equal to UTC. So let's now uh, do something. What we are going to do, we are going to write a query to put initial data into the database. To do that, we are going to create a file called data.sql, and in this data.sql, we are going to write some insert statements. So I'm going to come here and then create this data.sql in the src main resources folder. That is where you are going to create this data.sql file. So go to file and just call it data.sql. So inside it, you simply write insert uh, statements. So I'm going to show you a different way of adding data to the database, but we are not going to do that. I'm going to allow you to do it yourself. That is by the use of prepared statements. Uh, and that is a different way altogether. Hmm. What's happening here? Uh, oh, no. So let, let's just close this. So let's close this. So inside this, inside this uh, data.sql, I'm going to write, so let's just open it. I'm going to write insert statement. So let's say insert into student values. So ID name department uh, computer science. Again, I want to let you to know that the the the, the column name is arranged in alphabetical order. So if you check name and department, the same department comes first. So it means we need to specify the department first. Name department. So computer science. And the uh, name Kinson updated by right updated by uh, tech pro and the date we now specify the date uh, 2019 06. Oh, let's just leave it in anything because we, we don't have all the time. Zero five. All right, so. So there is an insert statement, uh, and at this time, I'll just like to copy it across and paste. I'm going to show you two flavors or three of inserting the date into the database. So I'm going to say Ctrl V, Ctrl V, Ctrl V. So to insert the current date, you simply use core dates. Core date, that's a function that inserts the current date. And to insert the current date and time, you use the function now. Okay, so this insert the current date and time. Uh, permit me to just put one more, and this we can just leave it like this. Um, okay, again, I can show you that you can also append time at the end of this. After I'll show you how to. So let's leave it this way. So let's change the primary case to three, four. All right, so let me just change up these names. Kids, or let's say meals. Uh, let's change this one to Chatel. And finally, let's change this one to, okay. So, so that it will not be monotonous. And computer are great signs. Um, this one is, uh, whatever science it is. All right, so let's leave it this way. So when we run this code, it's going to create this database, th this table automatically and insert data into this table. So for before we start, I'm going to open the MySQL uh, 
I'm going to open MySQL command line so that we can check that the, there is no table existing, or maybe there may be table, but there is no data inside. So let's say use to then, or let's say show databases first. Let's look at the databases. So there is a command to show databases. So we have students DB is a database. So let's say use students DB show tables. So there is no table in there, no single table in there. So let's run this application and let's see that a table is going to be created and data will be inserted into this table. So I'm going to click on, on let me just click on the application and say run as and run as spring boot app. So let's see. So once it succeeds and we have data inside the database and we have table created, we now repeat the same thing, this time for the H2 database. <coughs> so let's see what happens here. So you can see Tomcat started on port 8080, as you can see. So now the magic. Let's now go to the database to see what is there. So let's say show tables. Boom, Our one table has been created for us automatically. But most interesting is that let's check if there is some data inside this table. So let's say select start from student. Later I'm going to show you how to use Workbench. Uh, there is no data inside, so okay, let me just show you what to do about this. So here I can just comment this out, the data source initialization mode to always, right? So setting it to always will always uh, run this query, the query to initialize the database and insert data into it. So let, let me run this. So this time, hopefully, we are going to have a table in there and also with data inside this table. All right, so we, we can see that Tomcat started again. So let's go to our database again and try to see what is in there. So I'm going to say select start from tables and you can see that all the data has been inserted into the database and that is really good. So let's quickly do the same thing for Hibernate. I'm going to comment this out. Unfortunately, there is no multi-line comment uh, in this application, but properties file. So we got to do it manually. So let's now uncomment the one for H2 so that we can see that the, the table is created in H2 and also the data will be inserted into H2 database. So I'm going to save and I'm going to run this application. This time we are going to visit H2 console to see what is happening there. So I'm running it. So if everything is okay, uh, it's something we can actually celebrate. So let's see. So you can see uh, Tomcat, oh, we have error, we have error. So that is a problem. Let me check where the error is coming from. So the error says nested exception timestamp SQL statement. Okay, cannot pass timestamp constant. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to just go to the SQL, uh, see where the problem is coming from. All right, so here, um, since we are using Hibernate, we, are, we cannot use core date. That is a problem. We can't use core date because core date is MySQL uh, syntax. So I'm going to just copy and replace this and also replace the now function because now function is MySQL function. And at this point, I'm going to save it and let's just check and make sure everything is fine here. Okay, so we can see the date time pattern here is yeah, yeah, month, month, day, day. So let's run it to see what is going to happen. All right, so hopefully everything is going to work fine. Mm -hmm. Tomcat, please start. Great, so Tomcat started on port 8080. This time we are going to try to access H2 console to see what is in there. All right, so let's see. So let's go to, let me ship this guy out from here. HTTP localhost 8080. This time we are going to H2 console. Okay, so good. So this H2 console connect. 
And now we have two dines table created. Let's check what is inside. Just click on it and save run. So you can see all the data has been inserted for us uh, just the way we planned it. So we've used MySQL, we've used, let's see where we are. So we finished database initialization. If you want, you can watch the video to see exactly what I did. So the next thing I'm going to do is to create the crude repository, right? So we'll do that in the next lesson. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Also, if you have challenges, let me know. And if you've not subscribed, click on subscribe button to subscribe to my channel.